when I was 14 years old, I was diagnosed with my condition and I was told that I would be in a wheelchair by the time I was 20. Aside from some kind of miracle cure being found, it was inevitable that I'm not... That was a good change. I was going to end up in the wheelchair. And I did eventually. But for a few years, until I was in a wheelchair, I was struggling walking. Everyone I would come into contact with, would try to impart some wisdom on the situation, if you will. You know, they fed me a lot of fucking cliched lines that people in, in wheelchairs, disabled people, probably hear all the time. I heard things like, oh, it doesn't matter, it shouldn't affect your dreams and stuff. If you want to do something, then you go and do it. Uh, it won't change how people see you or treat you or act around you. You can still do everything you want to do. But, you know, it's, it's all a load of bollocks. Everything changed. Well, for me, at least, everything changed. And it didn't change for the better. When I was 16, 17 years old, 18 years old, even maybe 19 at a stretch, I wasn't exactly happy, if you will, but my depression was definitely not as bad as it is now. I was still very much struggling to walk around and I was starting to use a wheelchair a little bit more and more. And at first, it was okay, you know, things didn't change for me. I play, still play guitar in my band, I still... I went out, I was partying nearly every night. If I wasn't partying, then I was playing shows. I had lots of friends around me. I was always out and about with people. I had girlfriends. Um, you know, we had our own place to get, we had one of my girlfriends, we had our own place together and everything. And then, some reason and I'm not sure why but all of that just disappeared from me. I you know I had to I had to stop being in a band and I had to stop gigging and I had to stop playing guitar and believe me that's was really hard for me to do. I don't really have too much of an education as such because I spent all of my time playing guitar and writing songs. There's probably some musicians out there who are exactly the same. You know, I love making music. 
and I pretty much put everything to the side to do that. But that had to go. I, you know, I got forced into giving it up. Around about the same time, my girlfriend left me. And, and that sucked. I don't, I've never really done very good with girls as I had. Then again, I've always done the book and roll thing, you know, I'm in a band, this does happen, believe me. I had friends around me, and then They stopped calling me, stopped inviting me out, stopped in any contact with me. And I'm not sure what I've done to warrant that. Last Monday, I woke up with the most severe back pain I've had for a while. You know, I, I get about pain and spasm quite a lot and it pretty much rendered me useless and I just had to move around the house um other than at one point in the week getting a doctor out to come and give me some diet pan I stayed in the house on my own all week the carers come in uh, in the morning, half past nine to half past ten. Then they come back over at quarter past ten in the evening. So, for 12 hours every day, I was on my own in the, in the house. I didn't have any... Friends didn't come around, they didn't call me, didn't get any text messages, I didn't even, not, not even from my mum. Admittedly, she was on holiday, but still, therefore, it's not like she was in bloody the Peruvian jungle, you know? <sighs> and... And that's, that really got to me, that, that hurt, I'm not, not, not sure why I haven't got any friends anymore, I'm not sure why people don't feel they want to include me. Maybe, maybe there is a reason, maybe, maybe it's because I haven't evolved in the same way everyone else has. And all these people who grown up and, you know, they got family of their own and everything. Maybe, maybe I didn't want to be reminded of what it was like to be younger. Don't know. But that really, I'm really struggling with that at the moment. They say you can still do things even though you're in a wheelchair. That's a load of crap. It's Glastonbury Festival next week. 
and it is a few miles down the road from me. I live right by it. Um, I first started going to the festival back in about 90, 97 I think it was, 97, and it was really muddy, and, uh, and I went for the next 12 times it was on, 12 things, and I loved it, I love it down there, it's, it feels like feels like it's there just for me and I think I think most people will feel that most people who go there will feel that it's there for them <laughs> I feel very special magical being there and then but people say oh but you know you can you know just go do in the wheelchair you can still go along and well to a degree yes but to get it on a realistic point I as it is alone I have enough trouble getting in and out of a normal bed so put me into a fucking tent and it's just Jesus the next thing will happen uh, and also it seems to be traditional for it to get muddy and it rains and stuff and believe me if you've never been believe me it can get like a foot deep in mud. <laughs> Seriously, it can get fucking ridiculous. And that's everywhere. Muddy fields, foot deep in mud in the field. Yeah, a wheelchair's not gonna move an inch. And also, where the fucking hell am I supposed to charge it up when I'm in the middle of a field coming in a tent? Yes, it's, it's probably possible to do it all, but I don't want to... I don't want to have to be... You know, to do something I, mean, I would enjoy doing, I wouldn't want it to be everything else, if that makes sense. You know, all of that just sounds like too much hard work to... The cons outweigh the pros, that's what I was trying to get at. And... But yeah, it's on, it will be on next week. And everywhere I go at the moment, you know, all the temporary road signs are out, all the, um, all the cars with the sticker passes driving around on Facebook, it got people saying, oh, I'm going to Glastonbury next week, can't wait to see so and so and you know and it's just another it's just for me another reminder of things I can't do and how bad things are for me If I'm completely honest, I kind of feel like I don't want to be here anymore. And that sounds like a really horrible thing to say. But I just, 
I just don't even know if I can probably handle this. And then to make it even worse, I don't. I kind of feel like people wouldn't even really miss me if I wasn't there. If last week was saying I'm going to go by. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm just an inconvenience to people. For anyone, anyone who does know me, I haven't. I haven't changed. I haven't. Look, you know what? Look, what? Whatever it is, I have done to warrant. Me being in the situation, I apologise. I... I just... I just I, I, I don't think I want to do this anymore. I don't think I want to be making these videos anymore. I don't think I want to be feeling like this anymore. I don't want to be on my own anymore. I don't want to be having to live like this. I don't want to have to I don't want to have to be in a wheelchair and be a kind of inconvenience to people, which I guess is why people don't want to invite me out, because... Oh, you know, oh, Max, do you want to come do this? Oh, no, you probably can't do it, can you? Oh, well. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm sorry for rattling on, but if you made it this far, then thank you. All right. And again, I'll have a cup of coffee.